Howdy there, peeps. So, I have had a lot of mm, comments and questions and everything about this for a while, and I, it just, one of the comments recently made me go, hmm, I really think there is a misconception about what happens after you come off of hormone therapy, because somebody out there is saying that, I guess, that you can go on hormone therapy for a length of time and then come off of it and everything stays the same. That's 100% not true. Um, so while some things will, you know, kind of stay uh, in place, most won't over time. Uh, and so let me just kind of start off. Uh, we're going to start off with trans fellas here, uh, the trans masculine leaning folks who go on testosterone first, and, uh, and then we're going to jump over to the trans feminine folks uh, and say what happens whenever, you know, y'all go on or off of uh, either testosterone or estradiol. So um, with testosterone for my trans masculine folks, um, you know, certain changes happen whenever you go on it, your voice deepens, your skin gets just a micron thicker, a little bit oilier, sweatier, stinkier. Um, <laughs> facial hair starts coming in as these follicles turn into terminal hair follicles. Uh, body hair in general tends to get a little bit thicker and darker and grow faster. Um, over time, you see body fat redistribution to where it's a less feminine pattern on the face and you know the torso and all that, and you tend to gain muscle mass. So what happens then if you go off of testosterone after a certain amount of time? So of course it depends how long have you been on testosterone? Do you still have ovaries or not? Um, or did you have them to begin with? I mean, you know, some people don't. Um, so, I mean, of course, if you don't have ovaries, then that may become a problem because if you come off of testosterone, then you have no major hormone production in your body. You'll just have what the adrenal glands will, uh, will pump out. And that's just kind of like a low level of T and E, just enough to get you by. Uh, it's not really enough to maintain uh, the changes that you have undergone. So uh, anyway, assuming that you, you, know, you have ovaries or at least one little ovary kicking out stuff, um, you go off of T, the things that will stay are the voice. Like that's about the only thing that's gonna 100% stay. Now, the facial hair uh, and the body hair will over time begin to thin and lighten. The facial hair, you know, once these hair follicles have turned into terminal hair follicles, like that's not gonna revert. But if you've ever seen like a cisgender guy that's 80 years old and has that kind of like a thin wispy type beard, this is the kind of thing that's gonna happen over time is that these, these hairs will no longer be as thick and dark. They will kind of thin out. Um, so you won't have as full of a beard anymore, but you will still have some facial hair. Um, then the body fat redistribution, that will eventually go back towards a feminine appearance, um, facially and torso and all that. Um, the muscle mass, I saw on online, I did a, a quick uh, Google just to see where are people getting this idea. And sure enough, I saw some person saying that the muscle mass would remain no. No. Once your testosterone has dropped from, you know, masculine levels down to feminine levels, you will not be able to maintain muscle mass the way you used to be able to. Uh, testosterone builds and holds on to that muscle mass like a beast. Once that level has dropped, mm -mm. you know, you're going to have muscles, but they're going to decrease in atrophy over time, usually a few years. If you were on T for five years, then it's going to take two, three, four, five years for all of that, you know, fat redistribution, muscle mass and everything to completely go back towards baseline. Um, it, but eventually it, it, it does. It's, it's just, you know, you don't have the T to hold on to that stuff anymore. So, um, so anyways, uh, all of that, like I said, you know, the, the voice definitely that stays, the hair kind of gets wispy, thinner, maybe a little lighter. Same thing with the body hair, 
Body fat, that's gonna go back towards baseline. Muscle mass is gonna go back towards baseline. I mean, sure, you could get crazy with it and start doing like pumping really hard weights all the time to try and maintain, and that may hang on to it for a longer period of time. It's still gonna be a hell of a lot harder uh, than if you just had the testosterone to help maintain it. Um, there is, uh, you know, usually whenever you go on tea, you have some degree of clitoral uh, lengthening, thickening, growth down there. Um, that can atrophy a little bit, but generally you're still going to end up having a clitoris that's, you know, bigger or thicker than it was at baseline. So that's a, a permanent effect that may have a little bit of atrophy, but, you know, it, it, um, it will kind of sort of remain. Uh, and of course, like, if you were having menstrual cycle before being on tea and you come off of tea, depending on your age, of course, because I mean, hey, if you come off of tea after 50, there's a good chance that you've already passed up, you know, the menopausal age anyway, and then ah, you don't have to deal with it. And that's cool. But if you were on tea, you know, in your 20s and you come off in your late 20s or early 30s or something, you're probably going to see a resumption of the menstrual cycle. Um, and so that's another thing to, you know, have to deal with. Yay. Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's for the transmasculine individuals. You know, like I said, like you, you go on T, if you go off, a lot of that stuff is going to slowly atrophy over time, uh, back towards your baseline. Um, now as far as trans feminine individuals, uh, you know, this one, of course, Ladies, we get hit the hardest, right? <laughs> and this is, you know, so if you think of the changes that happen to a cisgender postmenopausal, so after menopause has occurred, a uh, cisgender woman, uh, what that means is that that cisgender woman's ovaries have stopped producing uh, the majority of their uh, estrogen in their body and now their adrenal glands are are the main producer of hormones for them of both T and E and it's usually quite low like both the T and the E hit around between like 20 to 60 somewhere in there so they're pretty evenly matched um, it's just just enough to function on basically uh, so anyway so the ovaries have just boop gone kaput and, uh, and what happens to a cisgender woman's body after that uh, is pretty much the same thing that's going to happen to any changes that you have in your own body if you come off of estradiol. So breast tissue, that's the one everybody's always most concerned about. So breast tissue itself is going to deflate or atrophy. So if you have seen 60, 70 year old cisgender female breasts, they get a little bit flatter. Hey, unless you had work done. And some people, you know, some people just are genetically gifted, hey. But for the vast majority of us, when we're, whenever we're 70 and have breasts, they're gonna be pretty flat. And that's because the fatty tissue inside of it just kind of leaves, it, it atrophies. And all you're left with is the skin that's stretched out from the years of having that fatty tissue. And so you have kind of this flattened breast tissue appearance. This will happen to a trans femme individual if they go off of estrogen therapy. Um, and I mean, that can happen if you're in your 20s, 30s, or 40s and go off of estrogen therapy. This is not me saying that if you go on estrogen therapy and you get, you know, C cups, D cups, and then you go off of it, that you'll be just fine until you're 70. No, what I'm telling you is that what happens to a 70-year-old cisgender woman's breast is going to happen to you in your 20s, 30s, or 40s because you now have mimicked what happened to them. They lost their estrogen source when their ovaries turned off. You lose your estrogen source whenever you stop taking it. So the fatty tissue in the breasts will not maintain itself in a low estrogen environment like that. Uh, and so they will slowly kind of flatten out and lose their roundness, their perkiness and, and the, um, the, <laughs> the boobage-ness. I, I don't know what the term is I'm searching for, but you know, it's not going to just magically stay fine once the estrogen is removed. Um, another thing, you know, people are concerned about is, of course, the body fat redistribution. 
and that will start working itself slowly back towards baseline. If you have gone through, you know, years of estrogen therapy and you have, you know, gotten to where you now have uh, that feminine form, uh, that is going to revert back towards baseline if you do not support it continually and maintain it with an appropriate level of estrogen in your system. Um, it's it sucks. <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't suck, but um, but that that's what happens. And I see people um, asking me these questions about how long do I have to be on hormone therapy before uh, it's permanent for life. So that's how long you have to be on it for life, um, or until such a point is reached that you are just happy to go ahead and essentially go through. Uh, menopause so you know if you get on hormone therapy in your 20s and in your 30s and your 40s and whenever you hit 50 you're like ah screw this I'm tired of giving myself shots all the time I'm tired of taking pills or whatever the case may be you could go off of it you know and like I said your body will go through those changes just like a postmenopausal cisgender woman um, the only caveat here is that if you still have the gonads in the downstairs area that will produce testosterone, those suckers can kick right back on after you've been off for a few months of your estrogen therapy and bring your testosterone levels up and that can cause a uh, more rapid atrophy or decline in the features that you have attained through the years. Um, now if you've had an orchiectomy or if you've had a vaginoplasty or something like that that removed the actual gonads so that they won't be there to produce, then that's one thing. But for the vast majority of folks out there who have not had this done, those things can just kick right back on and start producing testosterone and then they can cause things like the body hair resumption on the face and body, they can cause, you know, the skin changes to go back more toward a masculine appearance and they're also going to accelerate the uh, body fat redistribution and the uh, musculature uh, that, uh, that you had attained during your estrogen therapy years. So, um, so be very careful what, uh, what people are telling y'all on the internet. I mean, I know I'm just a person on the internet too, but um, I mean, shoot, you can look me up and find out I actually am a healthcare provider and that I do this crap all day long. Um, I don't know why people are out there telling folks that they can just easily get on and off of hormone therapy and maintain everything. Um, I mean, if that's not, you know, if that's your goal, you just wanted to experience it for a few years and then you're like, meh, you know, want to get off. Well, okay, you know, um, then that's your choice. I mean, people can do whatever they want, whatever makes them happy. But I just don't want folks out there lying to people, telling them that they can get off of hormone therapy and everything's going to be fine. <laughs> physical wise that is you know it, changes will start a, a happening whenever you do that um, and and like I said you know how fast it happens is different for everybody you know and certainly there are um, some individuals who even at baseline you know they already kind of resembled what their goal was you know you may have uh, so somebody like a good friend of mine who was assigned male at birth, but he is quite pretty. Now he's not trans, but if he was, oh buddy, he'd have the best transition ever. <laughs> but anyway, so um, so you may have someone like that, and it, you know, as they have that reversion back towards baseline, it may not be as extreme because where they started was kind of you know a different baseline than other people may have. Um, but anyways, so I guess I'm just saying that once again, <laughs> be careful what you see online. Um, there are some very strange individuals out there that I have no idea why they represent things the way they do. If they're just trying to cause trouble, do they get kicks out of this stuff? Like, what's going on? My dog just kicked the back of the table. <laughs> anyway, um, and I don't know what their motives are, but I suspect it's it's ill intent or maybe they just feel like they maybe they feel better pretending to pass this on to folks I don't know um, but anyway barring surgery um, you know transition effects are 
mostly temporary and can slide back into baseline over time. And like I said, I mean, you know, if, if you had grown out some big old bazongas on here and you go off of hormone therapy, they're going to deflate and atrophy. You may still have that kind of chest tissue, chest skin in, you know, breast shape form, uh, but it's going to be much more deflated and flat and not perky and the skin will lose some of its elasticity again much like a postmenopausal breast will in a cisgender woman um i think maybe that maybe that's where people get the concept and think that you know you maintain uh breast tissue because it's it's kind of like it kind of looks like it but it, it's not the same you know um because i can freaking tell y'all from personal experience breast tissue when you're 20 looks a lot different than when you're 40 okay um anyways so y'all have fun be careful as always you know the world is crazy um i hope this helped somebody out there uh because i get asked this question a lot and um y'all play it safe okie doke see y'all later bye